How's it going everyone? John here and welcome back to another streaming tutorial focusing around the Streamlabs OBS. If you are new to the series, new to the channel, and you're wanting to learn how to stream, definitely go ahead and take a look at the playlists all throughout the channel. And if you're enjoying the content, be sure to go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And also if you want to hang out with me whenever I stream, I stream over on Mixer every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So feel free to come on in and tune in, hang out. And if you have any questions, you can ask them also while I'm live. So today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to use the text tool here in Streamlabs OBS. So go ahead and create your scene, and then you're going to go over to Sources and click on the plus icon. We're going to go over to Text GDI, and then we're going to click Add Source, give it a name, Add Source. So now you're presented with the preview window up here. And if you look over on the top left hand corner, you got this little tiny white box inside of your canvas. So what this is, is just going to kind of show you in real time what the actual text is going to look like. And what we're going to do is we're going to see what kind of fonts we have. So you can use Google Fonts, which has a ton of different fonts that you guys can choose from. As you can tell, the little tiny scroll here is just got a lot to go through. There's a ton here. So what we're going to do is not select any of those. And we're going to use just the basic ones that are in Streamlabs OBS because you do have a good handful of regular fonts that you can use in Streamlabs OBS as well. So we're just going to keep it at Arial and for the font style, you can either keep it regular, you could do italic, you could do bold, you could do bold italic. So you got a little bit of customization for that. So we'll leave it at regular. And then for your font size, you can make it larger or smaller. Now the read from file option, when you click on that, it allows you to browse for a text file. And if you have a local like note, like a notepad stored somewhere on your computer that's got certain text that you want to display, you can go and search for that on your computer and then it will go and populate it inside of Streamlabs OBS for you because it's pulling it from that local file on your computer. Now, if you're wanting to just put in something, like maybe you just want to say stream starting soon. Maybe we want to have something like that. So that's going to be our basic that we're going to work with. So maybe we want to have that more bold, right? So let's see if we want to see if it will change it for us. Okay. So it doesn't want to change just the preview. That's fine. We'll just leave it at regular. <laughs> it just, it just doesn't want to work for me. I see how it is. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move forward. So we have our text that we're going to work with, and then we have the text transformation. So you can either do it all uppercase you can do it all lowercase. So for this one, we're just going to keep it all uppercase. You can also make it vertical if you want to. And you can change the font color as well. So we'll just make the font color like, okay, maybe that's too bright. That's better. We'll go with that blue. And for those who don't understand what opacity is, opacity basically allows you to adjust the, the intensity of the fill color. So the blue, right now it's at 100%, it's gonna be as bright as it can go. So whatever it is covering, so if you have something behind here, so if you have like a game or a photo or something behind the text, this is gonna take more of the dominance. It's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be brighter, but maybe you wanna have it to where it's going to not be so bold and in your face and super bright and everything. Maybe you wanna kinda of have it semi-transparent. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is bring down the intensity. So what you'll do is you'll take the opacity slider and as you can tell, I'm, as I move it lower and lower, it's getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, but you can still kinda of see it up here in this little corner here, right? So this just messes with the intensity and it makes it also a little bit more see-through. For gradients, gradients is another interesting thing. As you guys can already tell, the gradient is got it where the white is going to be at the very bottom here. And I got my blue on the top. So it kind of gives that nice transition between colors. And you can do the same thing. You can change all the colors and everything you want to and everything like that. So maybe you want to add a little bit of purple. We'll get some purple in there. Now you got a darker purple here and a blue up top. And you can also mess with the intensity as well. You can mess with the direction of it. Now for background color, as you guys can see, the background color right now is a box and it's black. But if I wanted to go and change that, maybe I'll go and change it to white. We'll move it up here a little bit more. And then if I go and mess with the 
um, opacity of it. Now you can kind of see that it's going to fill up a little bit more. And you can see the box show up a little bit more. So you can kind of mess with that type of stuff too. But if you don't want any of the background color, just make sure you leave it at zero. And then for alignment and vertical alignment, I don't see any type of changes for that. For outline, outline allows you to give what we call a stroke. Now this is basically just giving it a ability to pop off the screen a little bit more. So if you give it a different color, I have it set for white, but you can also increase the overall stroke. So here it looks larger and everything like that. And you can kind of see it starting to pop up a little bit over there too. So this just gives you a little bit of an idea of how that would look and everything. So it makes it help it pop off the screen a little bit more. As for the opacity, you can also mess with that too. And you can kind of see that it can either affect, it looks a little bit muddy, but I think if, I think leaving the opacity at 100 would be better and then just kind of gauge the overall outline size and try to figure out, you know, if you wanted to have it more of a brighter color or not. And then you can also have, we'll turn the outline off and we'll turn the gradient off. And then you can also have it to where you can use custom text extended and chat log mode. I'm not too sure exactly what these are per se. Um, so I don't want to give you guys any, any bad like information, but from here, what it, what it looks like it's showing is you can set up a width and height for the actual text and you can have it to where it's warping. So warping basically, depending on how large the box size is for that, then I can understand what they're trying to do. So like if I was to increase the box size, see how I'm making the box size a little bit longer for the height, but maybe I set this to 200 and now you can kind of see where I'm putting everything. So if I don't warp it, it will just be a straight line. If I do warp it, it, fix the it fits the box basically. Um, I personally don't use these, so I'm not going to use any of the custom stuff. We're just going to leave that as is. I do want to show you guys a nice little trick, though, that will kind of help you guys out with some of the things I think you guys are going to ask questions about. So we're going to leave that one as it is. So we have our text. We're going to left click and drag it to wherever we want. So what you can do is you can grab the little handle at the edge there and you can stretch it by doing a left click and then moving in the direction you want it to go. So if you want it to be larger, you're going to move to the right. If you want it smaller, you move to the left. Now, if you wanted to add some extra flair to it, you can right click and we're going to go to filters and we're going to go to the plus to add a filter and you're going to go to something called scroll. Now, once, once we add scroll, now you'll be able to see if we want to scroll it at a horizontal speed. And what we do is we just grab that ticker and now all of a sudden we have this moving. We can increase that and what we'll do is we'll say, say we have something here that says at the very top corner like recent follower, or recent donations. And now all of a sudden you can go and pull the local file and you can put stuff there. Or maybe you have a stream message that you that you have yourself written out and you want people to know like certain things about your stream, maybe some rules or events that are coming up or things that you're going to be doing or goals you're trying to achieve and stuff like that. And you just want that to be on a continuous loop. Well, that's what you can do for something like this. Now, if you're wondering like how to give a little bit of space between some of this stuff, what you can do is go to properties. And then what we can do here is we can just hold down the space bar. And now all of a sudden we got this nice long stretch of space and that will give you the opportunity of adding some more text. So add more text. And now you can kind of see that after a certain amount of time, it's going to eventually get to that point. So even if you, even if it's stretched out like this, what you can do is you can still have the box kind of sit like this and then more stuff will come up. Even though this is currently pushed all the way off the canvas, it's okay because we'll have that stuff here. And then what we can do to kind of clean it up a little bit more 
is we can even add spaces. Oops. I'm trying to, there we go. And then we can add more space. So that way we uh, don't have it where the text and stream are like right next to each other. So you can add more spaces and stuff like that to kind of break up the text and everything for you and give that a little bit of space for whenever stuff is, you know, being put on the message here. So it gives you a little bit of customization as to what you can do with your text and stuff like that. But if you guys have any questions about any of the text or if I missed anything, said anything wrong, if you want to tune, you know, you know, tell the people some other stuff, I was going to say tune in, but that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but no, if you wanted to go and chime in some of the things that you know about the text tool for Streamlabs OBS, please feel free to go ahead and let people know in the comments. You know, the more that people know, the better. And that is the thing that I'm trying to help you guys out with. I'm only giving you information based on my own personal experience of using the tools and everything like that. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and ask inside the comments. You can reach out to me on Discord. You can talk to me on Twitter. You can talk to me while I'm live. You know, I love to help you guys out as much as I can. So thank you so much for watching the video. I look forward to seeing you guys in future videos and future streams. And I'll catch you guys later. Take care.